Today's hottest music, Hot 103, your boy Henry G here with you on a Sunday afternoon, hooking you up all your favorite Latin hip-hop and oldies, taking your Father's Day requests and dedications right now, though it's an honor to be joined by one of Tupac's original producers, DJ King Assassin. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, yeah, always an honor, Henry G, to be on Hot 103, man. It's, it's a blessing, and big shout-out to everybody, the Las Cruces out there doing their thing, man, right here on Hot 103. I remember back in the day picking up a CD compilation, Assassin Presents Born and Raised in the Bay. You had the track on there, Assassin featuring Tupac, Real Bad Boys. Tell us about the track and also what it was like working with Tupac. Yeah, rest in peace, Pac. You know, Machiavelli. Um, Pac, he was the type of dude that, at that time, working with Pac, I never knew that it was going to get to to the point when we did that song that... You know, years later, he's uh, on top of the world with with Death Row and stuff like that because we were making all those tracks when he was, uh, you know, back and forth from, you know, L.A. to the Bay. And we actually recorded that that song in L.A., you know, when he was uh, working on the Me Against the World album. And uh, to me, Pac was just, you know, uh, just like any anybody else, man, working with him. It was uh, It wasn't a situation where where we were tripping like oh that's Tupac man because Tupac he was like our boy he's like you know he is our boy you know what I mean even to this day I mean if, if Pac was still alive it'd be like hey what's happening what's happening but now you, you know when when somebody's gone man it's just crazy and, and the impact that he brought upon you know the whole rap game to be one of the well I think one of the best rappers to ever touch the mic to ever do it you know what I mean at that time we're just grooving and having fun and drinking in the studio and making records we don't really uh, you know trip off of the outcome of, of of the impact after you know you're in the studio with Pac so it was a uh, it was a deep situation you know it was uh, more like uh, going through the, the different phases in life at that time and and later on in in years to come to find out that that the music is just uh, you know a, a somewhat worshipped by kids you know what I mean yeah. uh, years later. You know, uh, at that time, we, we didn't know. We just didn't know. We were, we're just having fun in the studio. Henry G here with you on the Sunday afternoon special guest, DJ King Assassin, one of Tupac's original producers. We got more to talk about here, though, is Assassin and Don Cisco with their tribute to Tupac. This is Holding On, Hot 103. Today's hottest music, Hot 103, your boy Henry G here with you on a Sunday afternoon special guest, DJ King Assassin, one of Tupac's original producers. Now, would you mind sharing the story? You're giving some insight on the type of person Tupac was behind the scenes. Well, what a lot of people don't know about Tupac, you know, your, your average fan out there is that, you know, he would write songs uh, right there on the spot. Like the song I did with him. He wrote that down in like 15 minutes, like just concentrating, sitting right by the mixing board. You know, he, he wrote the song, he heard the beat, he liked it. He was like, yeah, Assassin, this is a cool beat right here. Let's go ahead and uh, get something going to that. Man, he wrote that verse in like 15 minutes and then within five minutes dropped it in the studio. That's how fast Tupac worked. You know what I mean? And uh, a lot of people didn't know too, uh, just his style, how, how he presented himself. You know, he, he wasn't your everyday average gangster type of rapper as far as uh, the way he portrayed himself. You, you know, uh, he didn't dress like a gangster. You know, there was gangsters around him all day dressing khakis and sagging their pants, but Pac had a style about him where he would wear the lug boots that, that you actually see that are that are having people with what they wear right now. You know what I mean? Like back then we looked at that like, what is that? That's like, well, he's just uh, wearing, you know, the special type of boots but those were actually they weren't even called lugs then nobody knew exactly Pac was always ahead of his time with even how he dressed he always had a certain style a lot of people don't know uh Tupac uh would have his nails done people would be like <laughs> what his you know his nails were like glossy you know what I mean so uh he would get his uh his nails done you know a lot of people don't know that like you know this is right when he got out of uh, poetic justice you know doing poetic justice and stuff like that uh you know he, he was well taken care of uh when when, when uh, it came down to it Pac you know had a lot of style you know uh, worked hard in the studio he lived in the studio lived eat and breathe in the studio that's why I recorded so many songs right you know what I mean so that's the that's the reason why to this day you know you'll hear like damn is he still alive he got this song he has that song and this song I never heard this one before, you know what I mean? So uh, that's the reason why, uh, 
you know, uh, to this day, you know, there's a lot of gems out there that a lot of people haven't heard. You know, I got a lot of tracks that I did for Pac that a lot of people haven't heard. You know what I mean? That's, that's unreleased. But yeah, overall, Pac was, was a good dude, man, and uh, he worked fast, and, and, and that's our boy, man. He's going to be our boy for life, you know what I mean? And uh, rest in peace, Tupac. We miss him because, uh, boy, oh, boy, uh, he, he was so powerful, uh, and, and we didn't know it until he died, how powerful he was. Now, you obviously had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with Tupac, but based on his media portrayal, what do you feel is the biggest misconception about him? That he's crazy, that all he wants to do is just, you know, uh, talk bad about people and, uh, you know, live with, with his middle finger up all the time, you know what I mean? And, and not true, because that wasn't Pac. You know what I mean? That's what, you know, uh, the media wants you to think about him. And some kids might see that as glorifying when it's not really like that type. Pac was a, a real educated type of person. You know, he wasn't the type to, to to go down the street and see somebody if he didn't like. If they were wearing a certain color, he would gang bang on them. It wasn't nothing like that. Pac was nothing like that. Nothing at all. The media portrayed him as that. And, and that was the only thing that really got Pac uh, even more famous, too, was, was the different type of situations that he had got, you know, uh, a part of that that was controversy. And, and anybody that can be caught up in those, you can be caught up in something like that. I could be caught up in, in that. It's just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I think that was really whole life story because he was such a good dude, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Uh, trouble just followed him. It followed him, and, and, and that's where uh, the media just grasped that and, and threw it out to, to the masses that this guy was crazy. He uh, All he wants to do is just smoke weed and drink Hennessy all day and like <laughs> that, man. I mean, Pac stayed working and stuff like that. The media portrayed that about Tupac, you know what I mean? And he knew a lot about what was going on in society, you know what I mean? And, and he knew a lot about uh, a lot of conspiracies. DJ King Assassin, want to thank you for being a part of On a Sunday Afternoon with your boy Henry G right here on Hot 103. Big shout out to Hot 103, Henry G on a Sunday afternoon right here for having me. That was one of Tupac's original producers, DJ King Assassin. Here's DJ King Assassin and Tupac. This is just the way you want it. Today's hottest music, Hot 103.